Hello and welcome to the Easy Solution Systems tutorial videos. I'm Jesse Brown and today we'll be going through receipts in Retail Man. There are three options in printing a receipt. The first one is fairly limited, however very fast and simple. This one is the default option in Retail Man. To check that, we need to go to Maintenance, System Setup, and we go to Point of Sale. Notice that the format file name is blank. If it is blank, then it is the default POS option. We can slightly customize the receipt by entering the company name at the top and the address header. If your company name is more than 20 characters, it will print the rest of the name onto the second line. So instead of having the company name in the company name field, you can put it in the docket header instead. There's a few options with this. You can do cash sale, credit sale, etc. The credit sale is when you sell to your known clients. So when you enter the client code in the POS, it will print as a credit sale. Otherwise, if you keep it blank, it will print as a cash sale. There are customizations you can do with the receipt in this section with the boxes that you can tick or untick. The more boxes you have ticked, the more lines will be taken up, which will also mean you may go through more paper. We will untick the subtotal, and of course, if you'd like to have the client's address and telephone number on the receipt, you can choose to do that. That all depends on how you do your sales, of course. If you want to print the staff member's name on the docket as well, which is whoever is serving the person at the time, then you can put whatever you like with the word staff between the two tags here and the system will input the user who is logged in onto the receipt. You can also choose the symbol that will be printed on the receipt and the number of lines to skip. Most printers will require between four and seven and of course you have the option to choose to print more than one copy. Once we're happy with that, we can go to save. Now, if we go to the point of sale screen and do a sale, Let's say two large coffees, one small coffee, and one cupcake. We pay for that with $20, then send to the printer. The receipt that is produced should look like this. As you can see with this one, it is a very basic and minimal receipt. It saves paper, is very quick, and is already built in. Two things to notice is that we asked to print the invoice number. Also notice that the tax code is printed on the end of the price there. If the client wants to see that the item is taxed, they can see with the tags at the end of the lines. It has also printed the tax, total and change amount as well. It has also taken the variable from word staff being between the two tags in the message that was set up and replaced it with master user, which I'm logged into. Also notice that we have printed the barcode this barcode can actually be switched off and on. If you want to print that barcode, it's actually a small text file that you need to download from the web server. The only issue is that this is using the Epson code. Most point of sale printers can emulate the Epson printer, which is the industry standard for printing receipts. However, if you have a printer that is not Epson compatible or uses a different standard, then you either have to modify that code which comes with that file. Or you can just remove that file and the barcode will not appear. Now we'll need to modify the system to print the same receipt but on two lines. We need to go to Maintenance, Setup, POS tab. We'll choose the Print Part Number. Some people don't want to print the part number. They want two lines per item which will show the quantity and the price. They want two lines per item which will show the quantity and the price per quantity so that if they have sold two of the same item, the client can see the cost per item and then the total cost at the end. So we'll do that now. Once we tick this one and reprint, there will be a bit more information. The receipt then should look like this. Notice that the same information is there, but now we've taken the quantity on the second line and then multiplied it by the price per item and then showed the total. So it's the same sale, 
but with extra information for the price per quantity. Notice that when we print the receipt, there is a forward slash one. This is the number of times that the receipt has been reprinted. So the more you print, this will increment up to 99 and then reset again. So this receipt is based on just adding the part number option and the system will reprint, but this time on two lines. If you want more options to show on the receipt, you can customize the printer to print more information. Thing is, with the default printing, your printer can have the ASCII text, which is spelt as an acronym of ASCII text. So it doesn't need any Windows drivers, as long as you're sending it to the right port. Printer will print your receipt without issues. If you need to print more graphics and more information with different formats, you need to make sure your printer actually does support graphics printing. Most thermal POS printers would support that. You just need to make sure you've installed the proper printer driver. You cannot use the ASCII or the flat text driver. This will muck up your receipts, so make sure you install the proper printer driver. The other option is to put more features onto the receipt. This will also work with the ASCII text, which is quite fast. There are a few files you can use. One is called cachesale.pos. This file comes installed on the system and this will allow you to edit the file and change things around on the receipt. If you click edit, you can see that the company name is between a squiggle and the up arrow. This will ensure that the company name will print in capitals or in bold and big letters. And then we have to enter the company address on the few lines. When you see this squiggle character and then followed by a letter, each letter means something. So E is for the invoice number. So if we look at the data dictionary, if we see E, it's docket title, invoice lay by returns, and the invoice number. So since we have E here, this will print the title of that receipt. If it's an invoice, it will print invoice, etc. N is for the number, and the specified number is 8, which is 8 long. D is for date, and M is for time. If you say this character here, the arrow pointing right, this will block the input for being printed, which is used for notes and won't be printed for people to see. This will repeat the next line so many times until it's done. What we're repeating here is the quantity, the unit, the description, and the amount. Notice we have the amount printing as eight and three digits. To make it two, we just need to change that to two. And here we have the rounding, subtotal, etc. You can have a play around with that and see how it goes. Make sure you make a backup of the file before you start playing with it. So this one will allow you to do the same receipt, but in a custom format. When you print a receipt, it should look something like this. As you can see, it is very similar to the one that comes with the system, but this can be more customizable than the default. However, you need to spend more time doing this. The third and final one is to use what we call a format file that are designed by us, and this will give you the most variation to your printout and will look a lot nicer. We'll go to posq.frx. This file you cannot edit because it is a system file which is hard for users to edit. However, if you would like any variation for the output, let us know and we can add it in. Once you put this file, most of these options will not work. It will pick up everything from the file itself. If you use the posq.frx, the output will look something like this. As you can see, you can print the logo directly, which we have in the system. We can also print anything on there. So for example, if we go to the company details, it will print the company name and the company address as shown on this screen and it will print the logo there as well. If we go to the POS tab, POS receipt setup fields will be ignored on the printout and it will do it from the company setup file instead. So as you can see here, it looks nicer, but you need to make sure your company can support graphics and you need to have your post printer driver installed on Windows. Otherwise, this will not print correctly. Also notice that this has a QR code. You can customize this for the customer 
if they were to scan this code. It can send them to either your website, whether it be specials, information, etc. You can program it on there. To program the code, it can be done from the sales tab in system setup. Here is the QR text. So whatever you put in there, it will actually appear on the receipt. Note that we have to put the text between quotations. So this must be done to have the QR code printed properly. If you make a mistake, the QR code will print, but when scanning the code, it will announce an error, which means it won't show anything. So make sure that what you put in there is between quotes. You can also include the company name, the invoice number total, etc. But this will need a bit more information, which you can obtain from us. These are the three ways which you can print your receipts. But this one out of the three is the best that you can use and it's also quite fast depending on your printer. I hope this video has been helpful and we hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Bye.